Men, what do women do that is creepy, viewers edition? Here on Mainly Facts, we believe that all people are capable of creepiness. And after we shared some other people's stories, we wanted to hear what you had to say. So here are your stories of creepy stuff women can do. Story 1. To make the long story short, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a creepy thing, but it's a really crappy thing to do, and it's moving on to someone else immediately after breaking up. The long story is, when I hooked up with my best friend at the time in senior year, she immediately started telling people that we were dating, and it was very embarrassing for me since it was my first relationship, and caused some a-hole to spread rumors about me to her, which made me feel betrayed, since I thought I was friends with the guy. We only dated a week, and she broke up with me because I was too innocent, and that I dramatically flinched when she tried to draw on my hand. I had no recollection of her trying to draw on me whatsoever. Although I don't like being touched, I don't remember her even looking at me during the supposed time she attempted to draw on me at all. The worst part was that she immediately hooked up with a girl after dumping me, and it just hurt from how fast she moved on from me like I was nothing as if she'd done it a hundred times before, and sometimes I think about that week because it was the peak of my short life. I went from being the most bouncy, energetic, confident guy to a mess. I basically fell into a depression and just gave up on everything. I stopped trying in all of my classes and did the bare minimum to scrape by the last year of high school. To clarify, I just want to say that I'm not angry. I forgave her a long time ago, and I apologize for not being the right man, but the wound still hurts and will hurt for a long time. Thank you to whoever took the time to read this. It's been something I've been needing to get off my chest for a while. Hey, things like that can be tough. I, I will say this isn't just a woman thing. I've known plenty of guys who move on too fast as well. I will also say, you sound like a nice person, so I wouldn't let the actions of one person define you. She made some mistakes, but that says more about her than you. Plus, it was in high school, and I would bet that the majority of high school relationships are dramatic, messy, and not handled well at all. It doesn't feel good at the time, but it is important to learn from it, and don't let it get you down for too long. There's a lot more life out there to live. Story 2 the privacy thing is so true. Like, hear me out. In the Christmas holidays, I messaged an old friend to ask if she wanted to start talking, like in the old times, and get to know what has happened in all those years. She accepted, so for some days I tried to start a conversation, but even I could notice she really didn't want to talk with me after a few tries, like two or three tries, and not in the same day. So I just accepted it, and let's fast forward to the first day of classes. She and some girls were sitting right behind me, and guess what? She was telling them about how I tried to talk with her, but not like, oh, my name, tried to talk with me to get to know each other again. We were good friends back in elementary school. He was, oh, my name, tried to flirt with me. Yeah, the guy just in front of us. It was so hilarious. He couldn't even get the conversation going. He looked so stupid. It hurt, dude. It hurt. It may look like I have autism or something like that when I'm talking with someone, but that hurts. Did you really have to tell other people? I cannot get out of my head how many people in my class, or even not in my class, know about this. Story 3. This kind of goes beyond creepy to outright dangerous. The ability to convince other guys of a false accusation and still being considered innocent, or at least not a criminal, when evidence comes to light to suggest otherwise. My brother was recently jumped by a girl who convinced other guys and another girl. I think that my brother had spiked her drink. She lured him to her place for whatever reason, most likely to fix some computer issue, yeah, that's my brother for you, and they ambushed him and took his wallet and phone. Story is still developing, but his state will be charging each of them for assault and theft charges. That is seriously some creepy crap. Story 4. When I was 15, I was in a hospitality class and had forgotten to bring my ingredients to cook, so I had to sit back during class doing theory work instead of cooking. A group of girls who also forgot to bring their ingredients were also with me, talking amongst themselves, and I didn't pay them any mind. I was sitting doing the assigned questions the teacher told us to do, and all of a sudden those same girls came up to me asking questions, like, what am I doing? Then becoming more intimately suggestive, like, oh, do you like my friend? Do you love her? Would you have intercourse with her? I was taken aback and didn't say anything, then they started getting handsy and trying to touch my hair, my back, my earlobe. One even took a picture of me with her phone, I think. I just shut down and didn't speak. Luckily, it didn't escalate because the teacher and the rest of the class came back, so they stopped immediately after. I didn't know how to process what just happened, and thinking about it today was a completely gross and disgusting thing they did. 
makes me so upset to think about. As a man, you're taught that you should be grateful for any female attention, even if it's harassment, so you don't question it. You absolutely do not have to accept attention and force touching like that. It is absolutely wrong, no matter who is doing it to who. It always seems like there are some bullies around that age who are pushing boundaries, but just because that crap happens a lot doesn't make it right. Folks, if this happens to you, report that to someone you trust. It is not okay, and I'm sorry you had to go through that. Story 5. The 50-50 dad who gets annoyed by people telling him he's doing a great job. I 100% agree. It's annoying as F. I took our kids to get their shots when they were babies because my wife was at work and everyone in the waiting hall like nodded at me with a smile and looked at me like I was some kind of effing hero for taking my kids to the doctor. Like, what the F? Even the nurse who gave the shot commented on it twice, both times I was there with the kids. Also to girls, I've never discussed or heard any of my guy friends discuss any detail about their intimate life. Not even as teens. Like, what would we say? Describe her body? Why? We don't want to share that. That's our girl. Our body. Not everyone else's. I'd never breach that trust. And even if I didn't care about her trust for me, I still wouldn't do it for my own sake. I wouldn't want to share intimate details about the body I'm effing. I don't want everyone to know what that's like. That's mine. Please stop doing this, girls. Some guys might get anxiety or performance problems, or they just hold back because they don't want to try something new and be made fun of by your friends. And it'll create trust issues in your relationship. That's 100% guaranteed. So yeah, unless you want all those problems in bed, possibly lack of new experiences, and the drama that goes with trust issues in a relationship, just stop breaking his trust. Just stop sharing details about his most naked, open, intimate, and personal moments that are meant for you, his partner who he should be able to trust, and you should know what's okay to talk about publicly and not. You're not stupid. You know what you're doing is wrong. Get a hobby or go lesbian. Ugh. I mean, it isn't your body. It's hers. That's why you don't share that information with other guys, because it is her body, not yours. Now, obviously, in relationships, there needs to be understanding and communication about what each other is comfortable with, and you shouldn't break that trust. But also, plenty of people are okay with intimate details being shared, and are okay with people sharing things with their close, personal friends because it be can be healthy to have someone to confide in that isn't your partner. But if there are lines like you clearly have, yeah, that should be discussed in a healthy relationship. But everybody will be a little different. Trust me, I'm friends with enough people in the adult industry to know not everyone has your standards. Also, Get a hobby or go lesbian? Seriously? You sound like the guy who gets left at the altar in a 90s rom-com. Story 6. There was a girl who I was friendly with. Not really close, but we talked a lot and I enjoyed her company. But another girl in her friend group started this rumor that I had a crush on her and nobody in that group, not even the first girl herself, told me about this. When I finally found out through a long chain of people telling other people, I was hugely embarrassed because A... I hate being gossiped about, and B, I didn't want this friend of mine to actually think I had romantic feelings for her in all our conversations. I confronted each member of the friend group individually to work out the extent to which this rumor had spread, and I made it clear to them that 1. I didn't like that they were talking about me behind my back, 2. I did not have a crush on this girl and didn't want them thinking I did, and 3. I was upset that they didn't just talk to me directly about the information that, you know, is about me. It turns out that the girl in question hadn't believed her friend's rumor anyway, few, but I still felt uncomfortable that the idea had circulated in that group at all. As for the other people in that friend group, mixed results. A couple of them genuinely apologized, a couple tried to say the bare minimum to placate me while avoiding responsibility for themselves or their friends, and one of them outright denied the existence of the rumor even though everyone else had already told me she was part of the group. And when I told her I knew she was lying, even though she didn't have the grace to apologize for it, but she simply said, oh, who told you I knew? Like, bruh, this isn't about which of your friends betrayed you or whatever, this is about me and how you just lied to my freaking face. Grow up. Girls, if you're wondering if a guy has a crush on someone, please just speak to him directly. It's far better than waiting for him to find out after the rumor has been swirling for a long time. Would you like it if the shoe were on the other foot? Rumors and gossip are a nasty thing that I try to distance myself from whenever I recognize it, but it is an insidious thing. People hear stuff like that and immediately want to talk to someone about it, make assumptions, all that crap. Might have even started with the one girl who started it just saying, 
seems like they have a crush on her, and then it got twisted and grew between each person. I would also say that at times like that, it might have been best to just talk to your friend they said you had a crush on and just say, I've been hearing people say I have a crush on you, but I hope you know as much as I really love you as a friend, that isn't something I've really considered. Honestly, those are healthy conversations to have, as awkward as they might be. Story 7. I work in a late bar as floor staff, and in the eight to nine months I've been working there, I've been s harassed by both men and women, groped, touched without consent, kissed without consent, had people trying to shove their fingers up my butt, etc. It's happened so many times I've lost count, but one thing I always remember is that nowadays, if it's a woman doing it, I just try to move on and forget about it. Because I've learned from personal experience that women violating men in that situation isn't taken seriously at all. I've been laughed at more than helped whenever it happens, but only when it comes to when women do it. Then again, it's happened so often at this point that even the men doing it to me are just overlooked. Luckily, I've been able to get a new job away from all that recently, but because it isn't guaranteed to be a permanent position yet, I have to work between the two as a precaution. Wish me luck on finally being able to leave there. Story 8. As a young adult, it's sad that, watching, I wasn't even remotely surprised by the things being said. I've always had a good mix of guy friends and girlfriends, and our conversations are so different. Not necessarily the content, but the way things are said and the explicitness. When one of the guys finds out that another guy has slept with a girl, they'll jokingly bring it up and big them up or whatever. They might be some little side eyes and smiles if they see the girl around, but that's usually it. With my girls, however, the group chat knows as soon as they're finished effing. There's been occasions where one of the girls will send a picture or video that I'd really rather not see on to GC. Of course, I know their boyfriend-girlfriend as well, so I always find it so odd. We might go out for drinks as a group, and I have to think about how I saw this six foot three man in a maid dress last week. This is a fair newish group of girlfriends, and so I thought it was just somewhat normal, so I would joke around about how maybe they might want to keep this stuff to themselves or whatnot, but watching this video, it's crazy how the thought that their boyfriends didn't consent to any of this didn't even cross my mind. I just thought they were kinky and were into that, and also how common it is to be violated like that as a man. Story 9. It is very educational for me as a woman. I didn't know many of these things. Although something tells me it might be worse than the US. I don't know if it applies to women here in Sweden in the same way. But who knows, maybe it does. I do wonder though if perhaps society is more accepting of creepy female behavior since it's, let's say, a woman touches your arm, it's uncomfortable but probably not threatening. If a man does it to a woman, however, his interest might be intimidating to her from a safety perspective, depending on the context. Same if a man hits a woman, since he's in control of the situation, usually. It's typically regarded as worse than when a woman hits a man, since he can usually take control of the situation if he needs to. So I think some of the double standards stem from those differences. Plus, I think many women just have the idea that men are intercourse-crazed animals who can't control themselves, so unless she constantly keeps an eye on him, he will cheat. Ironically, though, I think that controlling behavior itself will actually drive him away, which just makes her think, oh, I knew it, and yeah, the spiral continues. As for women, complimenting is seen as less creepy. I think on average, people might assume women say those things to boost someone's confidence or to try to make themselves appear more agreeable by giving compliments, even if inappropriate. Kind of like, wow, you look so strong, you work out, right? While touching the guy's arm. In her mind, he must be so happy now, being complimented. I'm sure I've made his day. A lot of women think like this on a subconscious level. That probably seems really odd to men, since they don't seem to have the same mindset. So when men say such things, people will assume he's flirting slash actually intimately interested. Those are just my theories on why society might think different on these matters. However, as I'm watching this video, it becomes clear to me that many, many women are just creepy and act in very inappropriate, dumb ways. So just because a handful of things on the list might have explanations, it doesn't justify all of it. I absolutely agree with you. I think you've really got a lot of it right, though a lot of those are generalizations with plenty of exceptions. It isn't always clear cut, and honestly, at times, it is a matter of perspectives, as everyone has different experiences. But there are certain things that clearly cross the lines for men and women. 
For all the rest, we need to use our best judgment and be open to listening to other perspectives and willing to change our own. Even me, I might be wrong about some of this stuff, and I'm happy to hear what folks have to say in the comments. Story 10. I remember when two best friend girls were looking at whether they wanted to look and talk about it. One of them would look at me and make a vomiting gesture while talking about me to her friend, and that would happen every time she saw me while she didn't know I would notice, simply because she was sharing the same area as me, independently of the size. She would also cover up her face with a notebook because I looked, and one day I decided to talk to her about it, so I approached her, and she was surprised to know that I knew, and she asked how I knew, and I told her what she was doing wrong, and she accepted it, I guess. That's something disgusting they do, and they don't realize how creepy and disrespectful it is because that's something that they do between them, but they didn't realize that men are different. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.